Well, hey, everyone. God bless you. This is Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And I'm in the midst of a series of teachings on how to run the race and win in 2022. Did you know that God wants you to win? It's his will for you to win and to triumph. The Bible says that God always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Now, if you're going to run the race in 2022, today I want to talk to you about one of the essential things that you will need to understand if you're going to win this race, and that is you need to understand the purpose of trials. How many of you have ever been in a trial? I've been in some trials, some longer, some shorter, uh, but you know what I found uh, as I've been through trials and tests uh, throughout the years of following Jesus, every one of those trials had a purpose in it that would bring me to a better place in God's purpose and plan for my life. And so I want to talk to you today about how to get the most out of your trials. How many of you have ever been in a trial? Oh, come on. How many are in a trial right now? That's right. So let's talk about this. But let me first begin by sharing a scripture. The uh, James, who was the leader of the church in Jerusalem, he wrote an, a, a letter, the letter of James, and in the letter, he starts off the letter, these are the first words that he says. He says this in James chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, James, he says, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings, my brethren, count it all joy. Listen to this, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience or endurance have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Now, I don't know about you, but one of the very first times when I was in a trial and I read uh, this passage of scripture, and here's James telling me to count it all joy. I mean, my trial seemed like anything but joy. It just seemed like a painful thing to go through and, and discouraging and depressing and so on. But here, James tells us, he says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, because those trials are going to produce something in your life. Well, let me just prophesy to you. No, I'm not really. I'm just going to tell you a fact, and that is that you're in one of two places right now. You're either going through a trial right now, or you will be going through a trial sometime in the future. So if we're going to go through trials, it would be helpful, helpful to each one of us to understand how, what is the purpose of the trial and how do I win out of this trial? How do I get the most out of this trial? So let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us, and I'm going to share some insights with you that will help you to be able to count it all joy when you go through trials. Father, I thank you once again for your love, your grace, your mercy, for the Lord Jesus Christ and the victory of the cross and the blood of Jesus and the name above every name. I thank you, God, and Lord, that you have a purpose in trials. And so, Lord, today, help us to receive wisdom and understanding so we can understand the purpose of trials so trials don't end up knocking us down and knocking us out, but trials actually become a stepping stone to another place in you, another higher place, a lift from you, a promotion from you. God, I pray that in Jesus' name Amen. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you click share. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll leave a link for it there. And if you have any questions or prayer requests, uh, please leave them on the chat, or I'll give you my email at the end, and you can request or, or if you have any requests, prayer requests you'd like me to pray about. So why, here's the question, why would a Christian count it all joy when going through a trial? You see, one of the things we need to understand is that Christians live their lives on a different level. We don't live our life on the same level or from the same perspective that people who don't have Jesus in their life. Because, see, God has a bigger plan always in our situation. The Bible says that all things, Paul writes, work together for good to those that love God and those that are called according to his purpose. So, 
when the world, the people of the world hit trials, they don't, a lot of times they don't know what to do with them. They're, they're a defeat for them. They're, they're knocked down and they're knocked out. But that's not the way it is for you and I. We live our lives from a different, from an eternal perspective. So from that eternal perspective, we see trials differently. So why would a Christian count it all joy when going through a child trial? Well, let me give you a few insights. The first one I just want to say is this, and that is that trials are the place where God shows up. One time, Paul uh, was in a in a big trial, uh, and and he was uh, in a, a storm and a ship and so on. And he and he writes to Timothy, and he says this. He says, "But I want you to know." that God stood with me and strengthened me. And so one of the things that you will find about trials is that it's, the, it's trials. See, if there is, no, there is no testimony without a test. And the reason we have a testimony, testimony is testifying to the goodness of God and how God came to us and came and was with us and helped us in the midst of our trials. So trials are the place where God shows up. Another thing about trials is trials cause us to draw closer to God. I don't know about you, but I found that, you know, sometimes when everything's going do good, we can have a tendency not to seek God. By the way, you can learn from that. I found to, to, to seek the Lord, whether things are going good or going bad. A lot of people, the only time that they seek the Lord uh, and, and really pursue God and try to draw closer to God is when they're in their midst of trouble. <laughs> But here it is. One of the, that's one of the purposes of trials. Trials kind of get our attention, help us to realize that we need God's help. Uh, and Psalms 34, 4, it says, David writes, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. So trials cause us to draw closer to God. Another thing that trials does, trials are the place where we experience the power of God. There was another time uh, that Paul writes about in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where he was in, uh, had a major trial, was actually an attack, a demonic attack against his life. And uh, he, he writes about this, that he prayed about this situation. Here's what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. Paul writes, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations that he was getting from God, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, listen to this, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, he says, I prayed three times to the Lord that it would leave me. And God, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my, my power is perfected in weakness. And so here's Paul, and he's in this situation where he has this thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan that's tormenting him. He prays about it three times, and God says, listen, Paul, you don't just need for me to remove the problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you grace and authority and power to overcome the problem. And so trials are the place where we experience the power of God. Another thing that trials do and that trials make us grow in our faith. In James chapter 1, after James writes about, you know, if you're encountering trials, consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. Then he says this, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let endurance have its perfect result that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing. So trials cause us to grow in faith. Every time you and I face a trial and we, by the grace of God and by going to God, we have the victory, we experience the victory of God through the cross of Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus and through the name of Jesus, we experience the victory. It causes our faith to grow. And whenever we begin to have faith for greater things, because trials make us strong in faith. That's right. Another thing that trials do is trials are the place where we encounter the love of God and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Paul also writes about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. He says, all praise to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God, our merciful Father and the source of all comfort, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We are able to give them the same comfort 
that God has given us. Did you catch that? So in the midst of trials is where we can experience another level of God's love for us and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The Bible calls him uh, the comforter. Uh, Paul calls him that. And so trials are the place where we can experience God's love on a new dimension. Another thing that trials do is trials uh, are to help us to see uh, God's faithfulness demonstrated in our life. You see, uh, we, we, here we are, we are in a trial, and we are being tempted, we are being tried, we are being tested, and we think that's, we can't go any farther, we can't make it any farther, farther, but that's when God's faithfulness comes in. We find out that God can come in. He's the faithful God. I remember one of the trials that I went through many years ago where uh, where I had a business and my business went upside down and I didn't know what was going on. And, and, uh, and, and, and here I am in the midst of this trial. The trial lasted a long time and I was depressed and discouraged. But you know what? God came to me. He let me know that he was in the midst of that trial. That trial ended up turning out to be the reason why I ended up in the ministry. And, and God used the trial to demonstrate his faithfulness to me, his there was I had I had a desire to be in the ministry, but it, it all fell apart along the way for certain reasons, and so I kind of gave up on ever being in the ministry. But God used this trial, causing he where he didn't cause it, but he allowed my business, the circumstances around my business, kind of fell apart. I didn't know what to do, and God came and showed his faithfulness to me. And the next thing I know, I went from business to now I'm the pastor of a church and been a pastor for many, many years. So trials are the place where we can see God's faithfulness. Amen. Do you want to see God's faithfulness in your life? By the way, those of you that are joining me right now on Facebook, uh, I'm talking about how to run the race and win in 2022. And one of the ways you're going to do that is to understand the purpose of trials. And so I'm talking to you about why would James write in James chapter one and say, count it all joy when you encounter various trials. Now, you know, once you learn uh, about the purpose of trials, you're going to be able to actually, if you're in a trial right now, or you will be in a trial, guess what? You can learn how to rejoice in the middle of the trial. Remember Paul and Silas, then they're, they had been beaten and put into prison in Philippi. And at midnight, they began to praise the Lord. Why would you praise the Lord when you'd just been beaten, falsely accused, thrown into jail, put into chains? Why would anybody begin to praise God? Because they understood the purpose of trials. Now, here's another thing. Trials teach us to trust in the Lord and not in ourselves. Here another time, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, he says, I want you to know, he says, about the trouble that we suffered in Asia. We had great burdens that were beyond our own ability and strength. We even gave up on the hope of being alive or living. Truly in our hearts, we believed that we would die, he says. But this happened, he says, so we would not trust in ourselves, but in God. And so trials come, and, and what happens is, is we become, um, easily become dependent on ourselves. We start thinking, we can do this, we can handle life ourselves, and so on. And then the trial hits, and we realize that we can't make it. We're not going to make it through this trial. But then it's in the midst of the trial where we learn to trust God. It goes along with Him being faithful in everything in our lives. That God is, that's why we sing, great is His faithfulness. Because guess what? God doesn't want you trusting yourself, right? Proverbs tells us don't, we're not to trust in our own understanding, but we're to acknowledge the Lord in all our ways, and he'll make our path straight. And so trials teach us to trust in God and his faithfulness. Another thing is that trials remind us of our dependence on God. Jesus said in John 15, verse 5, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And so one of the things that a trial does is it forces us to become dependent on God. I can't do this. I remember when I was in this trial for this long period of time, I really came to the end of myself. I was so depressed and I was so discouraged. I remember sitting in my car and the highest thought I could have was, 
was, was taking a gun and shooting myself. But in the midst of that, uh, what, what happened was, is that I realized I can't make this on my own. I can't do this. That's when God came in. That's when God came through, when I came to the end of myself. And really, another one of the main purposes of trials is to bring you to the end of yourself. Amen. It's to bring you to that place where you realize it's not by my might or by my power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. See, God wants to be your strength. Uh, and, and, you know, in Psalm 73, the, the, the writer of Psalms, Asap was his name. He, he was going through hard things and he couldn't understand what it was. And then he realized that God had a greater purpose for him. And he said, whom, and I, whom have I in heaven but you? And beside you, I desire nothing on earth. Though my flesh and my heart may fail me, God is the strength of my heart and I por my portion forever. In other words, when we come to the end of ourselves, as trials bring us to the end of ourselves, then we come to a place of utter weakness. You see, God makes his power known in our weakness. When we're weak, that's why it says, let the weak say, I'm a mighty man. When we're weak, that's when we're strong. That's what the Apostle Paul says. He discovered the truth that if he comes to the end of himself, he finds God at the end right there. That's when God's strength kicks in. That's when God's power kicks in. That's when God's love and mercy and grace kick into our lives. So trials remind us of our dependence on God. Another thing that trials do is trials will cause us to see what's really important in life. Jesus said one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Jesus also said man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So trials will cause us to evaluate what's really important. When all of a sudden we, we think so many things, uh, you know, that we need to have this, we need to have that, we need to have our TV shows, we need to have our, you know, our boat to go to the lake and all these things. And I'm not saying that God doesn't want you to have those things, but we, uh, we, when we get down into a trial, when your life is on the line, when some loved one is in trouble, all of a sudden what's important in your life changes your evaluation of life, and ultimately that you begin to look at your life from an eternal perspective and not just a temporal or temporary perspective here on this earth. Another thing that trials will do is that trials will reveal areas of weakness in our life. When you, when you take a test, you know, the purpose of taking a test is to see what you know. What have you learned? And the same way, the purpose of a trial is to show us what we have grown in and what we have areas of weakness in and where we need to obtain more of God's grace. So God says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is perfected in weakness. So I don't know about you, but I've found that when I'm in a trial, if, there's, if I have anger issues, if I have unbelief issues, if I have, uh, you know, whatever issues in my life, they come to the surface in the midst of that trial. And that's not a bad thing. Come on. It's like we're, the Bible talks about us being like gold that is being purified. And what happens when you purify gold is you turn up the heat on that gold and you get turned hotter and hotter. And guess what? As you heat up gold, then the, all the impurities in the gold come to the surface so that the person that's perfecting the gold can scrape off the impurities so that they can, so the gold will be more pure until it gets to be 24 karat gold. Come on. And so the same happens in a trial. A trial brings out the impurities in your life. It brings out the weaknesses. It brings out the, the areas that you need to repent of in your life. So trials, you can rejoice in trials. And those of you who are joining me, I'm talking to you about how to run the race in 2022 and win. And one of the way, ways you do is by understanding the purpose of trials. Trials have a purpose. And that's why James says, count it all joy when you encounter various trials. Another thing that trials do, they will cause you to discover the wisdom of God. In James chapter one, where James writes about counting it all joy, he goes on to say, if you're in a trial, he says this, but if any of you, this is verse five of James chapter one, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, for he generously and, and he gives generously and enjoys giving to all people. He, so he will give you wisdom. So guess what? When you're in a trial, you have the opportunity to grow in wisdom. 
You're in the midst of a trial. You start to seek God. The Bible says wisdom comes down from heaven, and you get wisdom that you didn't have before when you were not in the trial. So trials will cause you to discover the wisdom of God. Lastly, trials will prepare you for the future. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4.17, he says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. So again, we think that, you know, the devil's attacking us. We're in all these trials, and these trials are here to defeat us. No, the trials are to bring you into another level of glory. Trials are preparing you for the future. And even more than that, trials prepare you to help other people in the future. Every time you go through a trial, maybe it's financial, maybe it's in your marriage, maybe it's in your health. You go through a trial, but you come through, God brings you through victorious. Then guess what? There's other people that are going to come along and they're going to be in a trial just like you were. And you're going to be able to encourage them and strengthen them and say, you know what? I understand what you're going through. I went through the same thing, but I want you to know our God is faithful and God will bring you through to the victory. Come on. So uh, one last thing I want to share with you as I come to the end of uh, this video today is I want to talk to you about how to respond when you're in a trial. So those of you again are joining me on Facebook, uh, make sure you click share. Uh, today I'm talking about how to run the race and win in 2022. And one of the ways is by understanding the purpose of trials. In other words, how do you get the most out of the trial you're in? God wants you to, get, the trial has a purpose and God wants you to get something out of this trial. So how do we respond when we're in a trial? Well, first thing is get the Lord's perspective on the trial. In other words, that's why James says, ask for wisdom. So you, when you find yourself in a trial, okay, why am I here? Why am I in this trial? And then instead of looking at all the negative things that are happening to you, you know, I'm in pain or this hurts and, and I don't like this situation and this is not fair and, and why did this happen to me? Instead of asking those questions, begin to say, God, I need your perspective on this trial. A second thing that I would encourage you to do uh, when you are, when you're in a trial, how do you respond? And that is to draw near to God, not away from him. So sometimes people get in trials and then they give up on God. You know, where is God? Where are you, God? Why didn't you come through for me? Well, how did you, why did you let this happen to me? God, you know, you're, you, don't you see my situation? So on. And so people will draw back from God, but that's not the right thing to do. If you want to win in the midst of the trial, you need to draw near to God, not away from him. Then also, as you're in the midst of a trial, remind yourself that God will cause something to good to come out of this trial. Again, Romans chapter 8 says, all things work together for good to those who love God and those that are, the, that are the called of God according to his purpose. And by the way, it goes on to say his purpose is to conform us to the image of Jesus. In other words, trials are designed to make you look like, act like, think like, walk like, talk like Jesus in a greater measure than you ever have before. So here it is. Remind yourself, you know, I don't like this trial. I don't know why I'm here, but you know what? I'm just going to make the confession. Something good is going to come out of this trial, not only in my life, but in the lives of other people that I'm going to become a blessing to. Here's another thing that will help you in go when you're in the midst of a trial. Ask the Lord what you can learn from this trial. Again, as I mentioned earlier, trials are designed to give you wisdom. So what can I learn in this trial. A lot of times you can find out that you got yourself in the trial through making some wrong choices and wrong decisions. You'll learn some things that you don't need in your life and some things that you do need to add to your life. And so ask the Lord, what is it that you're teaching me and what can you teach me in the midst of this trial? Here's another thing, and this sounds contrary to what most people would do in a trial, and that is to praise God in the midst of the trial. Remember I told you about Paul and Silas having been beaten, arrested, unjustly, wrongly accused, thrown into prison, put into chains. Here they are bleeding, they're hurting, and at midnight it says they began to sing praises, sing hymns and praises to God. 
And guess what? As they did that, it actually broke through and made the trial uh, into an opportunity to share Jesus with the jailer and whose whole family came to the Lord in that situation. So praise God in the midst of trial. It's easy to praise God when you just won the lottery. It's easy to praise God when everything's just gone good. It's easy to praise God when you just got engaged or you just got a raise at work. But the real proof of your praise is when you're in the midst of a trial and you, it's, it's hard, it's painful, it's frustrating, it's, 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 it's depressing, but you know what? You stop and say, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and complain. What I'm going to do, and I'm just going to begin to praise God in the midst of the trial. David was a master of that, King David, all through Psalms. You can see him. He's talking about trial after trial that he goes through, but in the midst of it, he starts talking about, I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to thank you. I'm going to give thanks to God. I'm going to enter your gates with thanksgiving, your courts with praise. So you praise God in the midst of a trial. Another thing to do in the midst of a trial is trust the Lord to bring you tr through the trial. Now, here's where we make mistake, and that is don't trial, try to figure your own way out of the trial. All that will do is keep you in the trial. I call it going around the mountain another time. You see, every time you try to work your way out of the trial, instead of letting God bring you through the trial, then guess what? It just prolongs the trial. I went through a long trial many years ago, and it could have been shorter, but I kept trying to figure out my own solution, my own answer. I tried to work my own way out of the trial. And guess what? It didn't work. It just kept me in the trial longer. And then finally, recognize that trials are temporary, but the good things that the trial will work into your life last forever. Recognize that trials are temporary, but the good things that God will produce in your life through the trial will last forever. Well, I want to come to a close here now, but I want to pray with you. Uh, you know, I'm sure that as you're listening to this message, uh, I've given you uh, some things that will help you to understand the purpose of trials, how you can count it joy when you're in the midst of a trial, but maybe you're in a trial right now. Maybe you're going through the hardest trial of your life, and some of you may be right there right now. But I want to pray for you, and I'm going to ask God to give you grace, just like Paul, when he prayed about his thorn in the flesh three times, and God said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in your weakness. In other words, I'm going to give you grace to endure this trial. The Bible says there is no temptation, no trial that is not common to man, that God does not make a way of escape. And so no matter what trial, and by the way, you're not alone in the trial. You're not the only person that ever has gone through a trial. Many people have gone through the same trial that you've gone through. Now, you can either come out bitter or you can come out better. And it's really how you approach the trial. Are you going to take understand the purpose of the trial? And you're going to begin to to get God's perspective and draw near to God and remind yourself that something good is going to come out of the trial. What are you going to do in the midst of it? I want to pray for you that you will make the right choices in the midst of the trial and even begin to praise God in the midst of the trial. God can get more out of a trial. In fact, the way up is the way down. The way you get promoted in the kingdom of God is through tests and trials that come into your life. And as you go through the test and pass the test, you get a promotion from God in the things of the Spirit, in the things of God, in the blessings of the Lord as you come through in victory, because the Bible again says that God always causes us to triumph in Christ. So let me pray for you right now. You may be hurting. I understand what it feels like to hurt physically, emotionally, mentally, relationally, all kinds of trials that I've been through, uh, people that have betrayed me uh, and different things that have happened or accused me wrongly, different things that have happened through the years. But I want to tell you that out of them all, God has done something good in my life. So I want to pray that for you right now. Father, and if you'll just receive this prayer, Father, I thank you for everyone that's watching this video and that will be watching this video. Maybe they're in the midst of a trial, they're in the midst of a test, and it's over, it's overwhelming to them. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They don't know who to talk to. Uh, they've run out of solutions. 
Uh, they're coming to the end of themselves. But God, I pray that you would step into the midst of their trial, that they would know that God is with them, that you are with them in the midst of the trial, and Lord, that you have a good plan in the midst of that trial for their life. And I pray now, and I pray that you will give them grace to endure. Your word says that trials produce endurance that cause us to become perfect and perfected in you and to grow strong in you. And so, God, I pray that over them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that they will see you in the midst of the trial. They will see the power of God, the goodness of God, the grace of God, the authority of God, the insight of God, the wisdom of God. God, I pray that over each and every one of them. God, that you will give them that grace that is sufficient for them and that power that's perfected in their weakness right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, hey, those of you that are joining me at the end, this is the end of this video. I've been talking about how to win, run the race and win in 2022. And one of the main ways we do it is by understanding the purpose of trials. You and I will be going through trials, but the trials will lead to victory if we know how to handle them. So in the meantime, I want you to know that God loves you, I love you, and Jesus loves you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll talk about another thing that you can do and how to prepare yourself and be ready for 2022 and how you can win the race every single time in Jesus' name. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.